All right, today we're looking at multi-line text and starting points, and it's important today that we look at quadrino snaps and midpoints, and we're also looking at the rotate tool to get these words, and I'm sorry, these letters at different angles, and we're also going to be looking at some different quick, easy ways to maneuver around AutoCAD to be able to create quick, like, shapes like this using the... Uh, not using any specific, you know, kind of precise tools by any means, but to make this kind of pie shape and use trim, just all around get better at the program. So we just have a 6x6 six six box, and we also have a circle that's 2-inch diameter. And notice this circle it does not have a dimension on where exactly it's placed. And we do have uh, these other ones that are 2 inches away. So we have 2 inches up, 2 inches down, 2 inches to the left, and 2 inches to the right. So the best way to complete this is going to start by drawing out our full box, 6x6, six six, and we're going to need a vertical and horizontal line. Alright, so the first thing I need you to do, just like anything else, make sure you do a file save as. Uh, save as, just like you do for everything else, like I did for the last multi-line text. Oops, not there. Hmm, where is it? Well, either way, uh, save it so it shows uh, MT2 and then your last name, kind of like you did for multi-line text number one. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag it off to my left side so I can see it at the same time. And I have a box with ortho mode on. Six by six. Oops. Six. Back up. Okay. So everything's going to be based off the center of this box. So I'm just going to use my line tool and make sure that your midpoint is on. If it is not, there's this little arrow down here next to your object snap. And turn on midpoint. And you're also going to need quadrant. So make sure the two of these are on right now. Okay, I'm just going to draw a vertical and a horizontal line right through the middle. So now this is where my offset of two inches is coming in. So really right, right what I have now is I have a center of this box. I can actually just go ahead and just make this two inch diameter circle right now. Okay. So now I'm going to use offset. Remember that's O, enter, or select the icon. And our command bar is asking now for a distance. And our distance is two. Two, enter. I'm going to go to the left, go to the right, go up, and I'm going to go down. So pretty much what I just did there was create four intersections to place. Uh, these other circles. Let's see, the circles are what? These circles are one inch diameter, and I know that because this is pointing to it, and it says times four. Now, times four does not mean that you do one times four. That means there are four other circles that look the exact same that you can assume are also one inch diameter. So I'm going to use my circle tool, circle diameter, and do one inch. Now, since I just did that one inch, I can go back here again. I can select circle and do this all over and hit one again. But what AutoCAD does is it saves your last command that you just did. So right now I can hit enter and it brings me right back into the circle tool. And I can click and it saved my last size. So right down here it says radius 0.5, same thing as one inch diameter. I can hit enter and it'll automatically repeat that. So that saves a little bit of time. All right. I no longer need any of these lines. These were just here just for construction purposes. So I'm just going to delete these out. Actually, I'm going to leave those there just for a minute. So I'm going to go back to that. Okay. Uh, while we're at it, let's look at the pie, pie shape that's in the middle. We already have these two crosses, or this one cross here. If we just use our line tool, this is just really going from corner to corner. Since it's a perfect square, it's a 6 inch by 6 inch box. Uh, this will just kind of autom automatically make 45 degree lines in here. So there's that, and I can use my trim tool. Remember, if I hit enter twice, it makes everything a cutting edge. And I can just select around that. Or, what I'm not, I don't want to do that this time because there's other things here. I'm just going to do trim, select my circle, hit enter, and I'm going to just click away all the stuff I no longer need. Alright, so now I just got that out of the way. Okay. So now with our line tool, we have these lines that go from here to here. Now it doesn't look like it's connected to anything because it was at one time connected to the quadrants and it was trimmed out. And then these circles with the G, K, and 7 next to them, if you look over to the side, 
oops, the side right here. It says the center of the circles are snapped to midpoints of the line segments. So this is a line segment, and it was at one time a full line, and it was snapped to the midpoints. So first we just need to use our line tool. We're going to go from quadrant, quadrant, all the way around. All right. So now uh, I can probably do this either way. I can do trim now. I can do trim, hit enter twice, and I can cut all this stuff out. And it's not really going to matter because I can put in my other circles there, which are what size? These ones up here are 0 0.8. These ones down here are 0 0.5. So 0 0.8. So I can make it 0.8 diameter. Either way, the midpoint is going to be the same, whether it is here or if it's here. It does not matter because we end up trimming it off, so it ends up making equal parts anyway. Um, but I'm going to enter in now um, these other ones. So it's 0 0.5, also 0 0.5. I'm going to stay on top of my trimming so it doesn't start to get cluttered and confusing. Oops. Trim, enter twice. And I'm just going to click away all this stuff that I don't need. Last one. Okay. So that's the basic shape of that. What's next? See, next we also have this larger circle here. Uh, and to get that, we don't have an exact size. Well, it is a 6-inch diameter. I guess we do know that because it is 6 by 6. But the easiest way to draw that is just going to be doing a 2-point circle. So I'm just going to go from midpoint to midpoint. And then I can do my 3 tan circles. And do one, two, three. I can do this all the way around. You can handle that on your own. What else do we have? So I think that's it for about all the lines and the shape except for these last few circles. Let's look at the text. So now down here at the bottom left corner it says the text height is 0.4. So in the last video we talked about how it is, our text is literally the physical size on paper. So this height is almost a half an inch tall. Let's go back here. Actually, I'm going to move this over again so I can see it. All right, so I'm going to just put this on text layer now and choose multi-line text. I can zoom in. I'm just going to draw a little box here. And this is going to be the number 8 that's in that. It's number 8, and my text height is 0.4. Make sure I highlight the text. And if 0.4 is not, he not here, you can manually type in 0.4 yourself. I'm not sure if it'll be there for you or not. Oops, highlight, 0.4, there we go. And now just like the last tool or last drawing we did with Bingo, instead of doing that each time, that's going to get repetitive and redundant and take forever, go ahead and just use your copy tool. Use copy, select your object. After you select your object, you hit enter, and ask for base points. Um, let's see, what I would probably do, actually before I do that, I'm going to center this and make this close to the middle of this as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but get it close. Okay, now I'm going to do copy, select my object, hit enter. I'm going to select right here in the middle of the circle so that center O snap pops up. If it doesn't show up, if you touch the edge of a circle, say that crosshair pops in. So I touch the edge, I'm going to select that crosshair, just make the center, just make it a little bit more even. Let's see, I'm going to turn off ortho mode for a little bit. So there would be that one that's there, there's the one there. And notice all these want to snap to the center. Again, you don't have to do that center snow O snap, it just makes it easier. So you can go through these, double click on them, and just change it to you know whatever that it needs to be. Okay, so what does make this different though, I'm actually gonna make these other ones. Okay, once you have them all in there, yes, I know I'm missing some. I'm not going to go ahead and edit all of them. You can handle that. But notice that the 8 is on an angle. So it is not an exact angle. If you can, put in 45 degrees if you want. But just a tool that we have not used yet is the rotate tool. So I select rotate. Your command bar down here says select the object you want to rotate. I select my text. Once you have everything selected, go ahead and hit enter. And it says select a or specify a base point. I can select right here in the middle. And notice now, when I move my mouse, the closer I am to it, it's going to be really hard to control. It spins real fast, but if I bring my mouse all the way out here and zoom out a little bit, I have much more control 
over how this spins. If I'm getting them real close, it's kind of an uncontrollable spin. But outside here, it's going to kind of eyeball it a little bit. That's how that's going to get an angle like that. So this one is actually a B. Select my rotate tool. Select your object. Hit enter. And then I'm going to select the center again. Move my mouse around, zoom out a little bit, and just kind of do my best guess in there in that angle. There you have it. All right, so in the end though, I do need you to place all the dimensions on this. So some of these dimensions can be a little weird for those two inch marks. Uh, so just select like this outside quadrant right here. I think the end point is the same. Yeah, there to here, that's gonna give you your two inch quadrant. There. Make sure you snap in these together. You don't just snap it here and just kind of play in this, you know, just leave it as is. These snaps want to work with you to make everything even. Don't forget the ones at the top. We're doing the same thing. Uh, please make sure that you are not doing this. You don't want to select the center of the circle to the next center. In some cases we do. Here we don't because see it falls on top and it just makes it look cluttered and messy. So please make sure you're just choosing the outside quadrant for your dimension. All right, so another thing that we have not done yet either is when we place a dimension of diameter or radius, I'm gonna click on this, put it on there. Now there's four of these that are the same. So to get that, it's much like we had in the quiz where we do double click and put in TYP. I'm just gonna double click on this text, hit my arrow key all the way to the right, and in capitals, I'm gonna do X, I'm sorry, space, X, space, four. So that's one inch by four. So these ones down here, I can also do, I can double click, hit my cursor to the right, space, X, space, two, so times two. So anywhere you see those. Um, don't really worry about writing in the text for this, about the center of the circles are snapped in the midpoints of line segments. That was just there for you to see. Do type in this, so this is very important. The text height is 0.4. So this is also, oh, that is not 0.4, what is that? Let's see. So down here at the bottom, just back in the text layer. Draw a box out. And all capitals, text, height. You can put equals if you want, equals 0.4. So I think by default, what comes in? By default, this comes in at 0.2. That's fine, that's a good size right there. So then, make sure in your layout, you turn on your viewport layer. Oops, turn it on. Do this, your standard scale, uh, one to one. Double click inside, tap view. And let's see, click here again. Standard scale and messed up. There we go. Now oh, one to one. So it's pretty close. So I'm gonna have to just move a couple things around in here without zooming. I'm gonna have to tinker with my dimensions a little bit. One to one will fit in here though with a little bit of modification. So I could actually move these down a little bit, or I can go back to my model space and kind of shrink these down a little bit to get it all to fit. And I think that concludes everything for this tutorial.